The S23 Ultra is hands down one of the best Android phones available right now. Yeah, is that all you need? Review over. Go out there and buy yourself one. Oh yeah, it's also one of the most expensive Androids on the market right now. And when it comes to Androids, there are a lot of cheap options and they can do about 90% of what this can do. 98% in the S22 Ultra's case. So let's talk about five things that make this phone great and worth the huge markup. If at the end of the video, you've checked off all the little boxes, then yeah, this could definitely be worth the money for you. Let's start with all the little things. Look, this thing is just packing all the stuff you'd expect from a flagship phone in 2023. A very bright 120 Hertz high definition display, Gorilla Glass 2 Victus to protect it, a dual SIM card slot, a great fingerprint sensor, wireless charging, IP68 water and dust resistance. Yeah, everything's here. On the software side, it's running the latest Android 13 under Samsung's latest One UI 5. If you've ever used a Samsung before, you know exactly what you're getting into here. Samsung DeX, which essentially allows you to use your phone as a desktop computer with any compatible display is also available. And I still think it's Samsung's best kept secret. Definitely worth trying that out if you have one of their flagships. A fast charger in the box, expandable memory and a headphone jack probably would have elevated this from a nine out of 10 to an absolute 10 out of 10, maybe even an 11 out of 10 if I was feeling generous but it's 2023. We just don't really see that stuff in phones anymore. Uh, but for a phone released this year, this pretty much has it all. And then some. The S Pen is back for a second round. There's really not much new to write Hey, writing? <laughs> Home about with this iteration? Uh, but using it as a quick signature maker, a notes taker, a general drawing tool and a camera remote by doing that, um, yeah, it's just a really neat thing to be able to carry around with you at all times without really costing any space. Slipping it into the phone and clicking it out is a genuinely fun and juicy experience to the point that I can't stop from fiddling with it when it's in my pocket. Phones really need more physical stuff going on. This is so satisfying. Okay, my hand's getting sore. This is actually quite difficult. The S Pen does get one minor update, which is more of a byproduct of this phone's flatter screen than last year. I just found it's a little easier to draw all over it without slipping off the rounded edges. My absolute favorite thing about the S Pen is still that you can use it as a remote shutter for the camera app. So all you have to do is click the pen like this and it takes a photo. How good's that? There's also something called air gestures, which allows you to remotely control other parts of the app. Uh, so you can flick it up like that and that should, should have changed the lens. I don't actually know, I can't see the screen. Uh, but yeah, how cool is that? These don't always perfectly register, so it's not something I'd rely on, but the fact you can zoom by doing some Wingardium Leviosa type shenanigans is endlessly entertaining to me. Speaking of cameras, the versatile range of lenses on offer here are pretty much that of the S22 Ultra, except for the main lens and the selfie camera. While every lens is genuinely impressive, the 10 times optical telephoto zoom remains an absolute treat for phone photographers, and the 100 times digital zoom is a ridiculous idea that is very, very fun to mess around with, and can even be occasionally useful if you're trying to read some faraway text. The biggest change here is the main wide lens, which is now 200 megapixels. 200 megapixels is a lot for a phone camera. It's kind of a lot for any camera, honestly. In comparison, uh, this is a 40 megapixel camera, this professional one here, and this is considered pretty high in its class range as well. Um, the good thing is though, your photos won't actually come out as 200 megapixels unless you specifically ask it to. By default, it really only takes 12.5 megapixel images, but it uses the full power of the 200 megapixel sensor to get a higher quality image. This is also said to help low light performance, which is admittedly fantastic across all four of the lenses. Pressing the shutter, the software takes a few seconds, then bam, the photo's good now. Incredible. The main camera is now f1.7 as well, which means you can get really decent depth of field in some scenarios, even without having to use Samsung's still pretty mid-tier portrait mode. I still don't love Samsung's tendency to oversaturate and sharpen everything so much, but they know what they're doing. It's fantastic for instant posting to social media or sending to mates. If you really care about dialing in a more natural look, shooting in RAW or their dedicated expert RAW app creates some stunning RAW images. Look at these photos. Beautiful. This phone also gets 8K. Uh, this time it's a full 30 FPS instead of 24 like last time. Uh, that's an extra whole six frames to play with, baby. Uh, but it is still just locked to the main lens. Um, look, 8K isn't really something you need your phone to do. One, it just takes up way too much storage space. And two, you've probably got nothing to play it on. But I will give it to Samsung. This is the first time I've actually liked the look of AK out of a phone. So uh, points of them for that. 
Let's talk about chips. The S23 Ultra is among the first batch of phones to ship with the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip. But this is a special overclocked 4 Galaxy chip, which allows this to pump out even more power compared to other Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 phones. It's currently topping Android single core benchmark tests and coming second in multi-core, only to another Snapdragon Gen 2 device. Basically, it means this phone can run pretty much any app with ease, including the most graphically intense games on Android. As with a lot of phones these days, all of that will probably be overkill if you just want a phone to do normal phone stuff, but it does mean you can confidently use this probably for like the next five years or so, which coincidentally is how long Samsung have promised to give this security updates. The chip also contributes to its battery life. Battery life was a common complaint when it came to the S22 Ultra, but even though this one has the same 5000 milliamp hour capacity, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip inside somehow really allows this to maximize that power compared to last year. You can easily get two days out of this phone, which is pretty incredible. I often turn off big features on phones to maximize battery life. You don't have to with this one. I've been enjoying its 120 hertz display. I've left it on bright, full resolution, the whole shebang. It's not the fastest charging phone around with the best being 45 watts, although you'll have to buy the specific charger as well. I didn't get to test that, but that should get you from zero to 100 in about an hour. So that's it. If you want all of those things, get this phone. It's fantastic. One last thing to consider about its price though. The cameras here generate a lot of data really quickly if you're not on top of it. Uh, same goes for if you're using this as a gaming device, games can take up a lot of space. And if you're using this as a Samsung DeX pseudo laptop style device, that can generate a lot of data as well. So you'll probably want one of these with maybe even up to a terabyte of storage. And right now, the RRP for that is $2,649. So after that, if you're thinking, well, uh, maybe I would prefer to save $1,600 and still get a phone that can almost do all of the things the S23 Ultra can do, the Pixel 7 Pro would be my solution for you. Uh, go check out my review of that here. Or if you want to save a little bit of money, but not quite as much, my S22 Ultra review is on the right.